forth came in 10 days and you see really uh, the spirit and uh, how they deal with setbacks really good. There is very positive signs, you know, that, that we're going in the right direction. And I think you're starting to see more and more of what the manager wants and, you know, we're bringing that onto the pitch. I think in the end it feels like a loss. Um, obviously it was a draw, um, which I think after the first 30 minutes when they dominated, we would have took a draw. So I think overall it's a fair result, but, um, you know, in the end it does feel like a loss. It seemed to have an immediate effect, changing the shape and bringing Kovacic on. Yeah, I just felt we needed an extra body in there just to help us try to control that area of the pitch. Um, you know, it wasn't from a lack of trying at all in the first period of the game. It was just, yeah, we needed to adjust there. Manchester United played well as well. So um, I think it probably helped us. And then the boys, like I said, gave everything throughout the game. Throughout the game. And um, when you score as late as you do, there's a feeling that you've dropped points. But in the end, um, probably over the course of the game, a point's about right. On his even, thrilling finale and quite the tactical battle, Danny. It was indeed. Two intelligent managers going head-to-head, -head, making adjustments. United started brilliantly well. They're playing good stuff at the moment. They played the three in midfield against Chelsea's two. You can see the two in there. Um, and then you've got Fernandez, Eriksen and Casemiro. And they just kept outnumbering them. They're intelligent players. They kept finding the spare one and getting out onto the Chelsea back five. And uh, they should have been... They should have been ahead earlier in the game, Manchester United, with the chances that, again, Fernandez picking up the ball in that hole. Jorginho and Loftus-Cheek didn't know what to do. Sancho there, just risk it. Put it across with your left foot. You've got Rashford in on the back post. Doesn't quite happen for them. And, and again, here, you can see the close proximity of the United three. There's the Chelsea two, and they, they just couldn't cope with them. But what do good managers do? They react when and they admit they've, they've made a mistake. Mm. Um, better, better touch from Rashford there. He'd probably just... Over, over touches it and takes away the chance. He brings on Kovacic, recognises the mistake, goes to a back four, puts Chilwin at left back, takes Cucurella off and puts a diamond in the middle of the park, mm. puts Mount on Casemiro, tries to overload the middle of the pitch. And what, straight away, Chelsea got a foothold in the game. They managed to get higher up the pitch and dominate possession. It was a really, mm. really clever way of, of quickly getting them back in the game. And um, the only question maybe is why well, he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> but. And again, winning the ball back higher up. Mount more in the central where he can be more influential and a little better pass there from Sterling. He could have got in. Mm. Just to say on Ten Hag, actually, he did react early in the second half yeah. to that, put Fred on for Sancho, which evened up the game. Mm. And a draw was about right. Yeah, probably was. Ten Hag talked about the resilience of uh, Casemiro. I mean, he was... He's made a real difference for them. Absolute class. I think it's mm. a player that they've been missing for years. Conducts everything in, in that midfield. The real just sort of defensive brain of the team. And he can pass as well. This is a wonderful mm. ping out here. Teasing ball. He's able to do this when, whenever he gets it. Never ruffled. Sniffs out danger. Senses things really well. He anticipates. And if you give it to him in a tricky situation, mm. look, he can find a pass. Look, just this one here just whips that one out to the wing is really is important but this is this look at his anticipation here look gambles sneaks and wins it and then he sets them on the way and this really should have been a, a goal there mm. Rashford's touch let him down just a little bit I just love the way that he gets in front of being perfect you, um, obviously I've had lots of defend over the years midfield players but look you see people doing that in mm. front of you it's brilliant because his positioning is first class it's always really in good. the right place it's really good for his team and, and, and really then, when he, they need him most mm. as well, he comes to the fore, takes responsibility. That is a wonderful header there, his first goal for United. Look what it means to him. Yeah. He's not known for his heading, he's scoring yeah. goals. He, he brought a bit of Real Madrid to the, the side there, didn't it? That last-ditch goal. He's, he's, a, kind of <clears throat> he's a class act mm. and he knows exactly what he's good at and what, and what his strengths are. Mm. And as Martin said, the, the reassurance he gives others around him mm. is so evident when you watch mm. United play yeah. now. Yeah, it was a good game, a really interesting really game, game. Of, of football, wasn't it? Uh, Martin, Danny, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we're nearly out of time, but before we go, uh, let's have a look at the Premier League table. Manchester City moved to within one point of leaders. Arsenal, who faced Southampton on Sunday. Uh, Liverpool have already surpassed the number of league defeats they suffered in the whole of last season and remain 11 points adrift of top spot. Nottingham Forest's first win since the 14th of August lifts them off the foot of the table. Everton's return to form helps them rise up to 11th. And what he got was a draw, and these two have now made 26 of those in Premier League history. The most drawn fixture we've seen uh, in the Premier League era. Was that about right today for you, yeah? 
I think so, yeah. Well, well United was, was the better team the first half. We said that already. You know, they created a couple of opportunities, what we've seen as well. After that, after, I think after 30, 35 minutes, uh, when they made the sub, Chelsea, they got a little bit more back into the game. You know, created, well, not a lot of chances, but made it more difficult for United to play out. Second half, it was, as, as we say, like more of an open game. You know, you're going back and forwards without creating opportunities, hard-working teams. Uh, and then Chelsea goes ahead, you know, because of this uh, this penalty. But Chelsea wasn't the better team, of course. Um, and then United comes back in and, and equalises, which is, I think, fair enough. They, they they didn't deserve to lose United. And if you look at opportunities, yeah, then you can say United was was well deserved more more out of it. But overall, if you're looking at that game, then I'm thinking one one is. Uh, it's fair enough. Having said that, from a Chelsea point of view, when you're one up with six minutes to go, a disappointment they couldn't close that out? Yeah, I would say, I would think so also, because uh, uh, probably they were, they were thinking the game was over. And uh, But, uh, you know, when you play teams like uh, United, there's never, uh, you know, it's never finished until the end. And as I said before, fair enough to say that they deserve to get the point. From a United point of view, when you're one down, away from home at one of the big six. Is that a positive, that you take something out of the game later on? Yeah, it has to be. I think going, going away to these grounds, you said to, to, the, to the big teams, getting a point later on when you're... Mm-hmm. Obviously, with, with, with not long left, three or four minutes left, I think, I think they deserve... I, I think over the old guy, I think they deserve to win the game. Really, if you look at the chances, the dominance in the first half, you know, really not taking chances was a problem. And I never felt worried by Chelsea. You, you, know, you think of the attacking quality that it got with Mount, Aubameyang, Sterling. I never felt they were really in the game. I can't really remember him creating a chance between themselves or missing a chance. I thought it was a, a pretty dominant display overall by United. But that's what I can say about, the, about Chelsea right now. I think uh, Graham, when he came, I think he, he's, he's, uh, he's made the team better defensively. Uh, we are conceding less and we are solid we can see that but uh, going forward I would think, I would think there's still a lot, of jo- a lot of work to do the, the team sometimes is, uh, is not as fluid and flawless as it was before the way they obviously got the goal was through the penalty if you were his manager what would you say to Scott McTominay after this yap well I think you bring him on because to make a difference you know when, when, and, and then after a couple of minutes when he comes on and you see this happening, then, then, well, you must be angry as a manager as well, especially if you look back at the situation. You know, players are, are doing it like, like this, defending like this, in set pieces, and then afterwards they're saying, yeah, I didn't touch him, basically, while he's grabbing him like, like he's playing rugby, <laughs> and he's making this foul. And, um, you know, so, so you, you need to be aware, and your positioning in, in defending uh, corner kicks or, or, or strikers in the box with, uh, with corners is, yeah, you, it needs to be right. You need to be not like behind the, the play. You need to be a, like a little bit in front of him as well. So you can, you can see the ball coming, but you also know where he's going to go. So you can anticipate through the situation. His positioning wasn't right as well, and that's why he needs to grab him because he gets away from him. And he's making this foul. And then, then it becomes like, well, uh, expensive if, if you concede. Uh, a goal, and then you need to get back into the game. So, and then when you then equalise, you can say, yeah, okay, it's it's fair that you then eventually equalise. And and that's uh, these are small things that even young players need to need to learn as well. Because if you want to go to a certain level, you want to reach the top four, or you want to win the the league, then you don't need to make these mistakes. And you've only been on four minutes, Scott McTominay. <laughs> <laughs> the manager might have wished he refused to come on. <laughs> <laughs> Not two in a week. <laughs> uh, that would have been the better one. This would have been the better one. Um, but look, look, it's, it's crazy. Uh, um, and I, I, as I said, with VAR around, you, you just can't do anything. It's you, you know he's got a, he's got a hold of him, and you know some time ago, as as I said before, when we were playing, you, you get away with that. You could do whatever you want. You could grapple, and referees would never give anything. But to do it right in front of the referee, referee and as I said, timing out of it as well was, was poor. Um, but how can do, you, do you defend yeah. and get your body no, shape yeah, right? Yeah, but how, how can you it? defend like a corner as well? We're not looking at the ball even. Uh, exactly. Because yeah. he's just looking at his player. We have to look at both. And he's not looking yeah. at where the ball is being taken. And then when the player is reacting, you need to react by yeah. grabbing him basically. Because otherwise he gets in front of you, he gets yeah. away from you. But it was and interesting that's, that's, what you were saying, Yap. It's, uh, as a, as a, me as a striker, I want to get in front of you. 
in a, in a corner, in a cross yeah. from that yeah. direction. I want to get in front of you. And you as a defender, you have to have a, a position in which it, you don't allow me to get in front of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was cor yeah correct because if you're the striker saying, was positions. making a movement also to go in front, so if you were yeah. making a movement to go in front yeah. and he wasn't going to go to the back, you can always block him with, with your arm. It's not holding him. Yeah. You can always block him a little bit. Like he, he's so concerned with grabbing all yeah. the lad. Yeah. Rather than being in the right position, you, you don't have to be that aggressive right. towards no. him. You don't have to touch him. As long as you're in the right position, a yard of him, so that's the space he's got to run to. So he just runs into you. And, and that's yeah. when you block him. That's when you use your body. So you just got a little bit carried away with, with getting body to body. And obviously you just can't do that these days. Would that striker have got ahead of that defender, do you think, Paul, in that situation? Um, I might have gone under him or through his legs <laughs> or something. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. But to be fair, he'd have been taking the corner. He wouldn't have been trying to get across <laughs> him. Um, he might have been taking the penalty. You've worked with Jorginho. 19 from 22 in the Premier League. What about this technique? and the consistency he has from the spot. No, it's very good. First of all, in order to take penalties like this, you have to be really cool because you have to wait for the goalkeeper to move and then, you know, choose your angle. You really, you, you really need to be in control of your emotions. I think the problem for him comes when the goalkeeper doesn't move. He stays until the end. It doesn't happen often, but when it he, when he does, it can be a problem. Some record that, isn't it? We've seen some great penalty takers in the Premier League era, but it his is, record is right up there. Yeah, it's it. brilliant. As, as Franco said, it, it's so brave. I remember w when we were playing in training, you know, there was a couple of players who used to do it. Just, you know, walk, they're actually walking up and just staring at the keeper and just staring at his eyes <laughs> and then just tap the ball in wh wh whichever way he goes. It's, it's so brave. I, yeah. I couldn't have, well, I'm not going to give you advice on penalty <laughs> taking because I was, not, I was neither. not very good. Me neither, yeah. <laughs> my, my mind's still, still in outer space when I took you in 2000. <laughs> still yeah, going. I, I wasn't going to bring up <laughs> Amsterdam 2000, but yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Good to know you've got over yeah. it, yeah. I was not you were going to go back to uh, No, no, no. Uh, let's, uh, let's get to the header because United kept going. Yeah. 94th minute. Casemiro was brought in to do a different job, obviously, but he has got this in his locker. Yeah, he, he can finish it. You know, he, he, you know at Madrid, he, sometimes he gets into the box as well. Uh, against Everton he did it he missed now great timing great header it's difficult from that position it being in the air and then bringing that ball all the way back again to the other post and then uh, you know goalkeeper tries to save it but couldn't get his fingers around it and then he goes in so a very uh, a very good header a very important one as well delivery as well yeah great delivery from Luke Shaw I think he was on, it. He was on his hands and knees just before that ball came to him he, he looked really tired towards the end of the game but yeah fantastic delivery Really good header. Just to, the more I watch this, I do question the goalkeeper a little bit. No, it's not right in the corner. Oh, God, I don't know. It's, it, it, it's a difficult one. I, I think if Mendy's in goal, they look at but I think he saves that just purely by the size of him. Um, I'm not sure what Franco thinks about that. We're going to find out because I'm going to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be honest, he's made a, you know, a nearly a miracle because it wasn't easy to get that. The, the header was fantastic on the opposite side. He was moving to, to the near post and then he had to change the direction. And uh, you were saying before that normally on that Good post hands. you go with his arm, but uh, if you go with his arm, you cannot push as much as if you mm. try to reach with the, with the opposite arm. That's the reason why the goalkeepers do that. And I think, uh, you know, he's done enough to touch it. Unfortunately for us, it wasn't, it wasn't enough. So that's a positive for United, as is one defeat in nine. Blemish for the day was Raphael Varane uh, going yeah. off in the second half in quite a distressed and emotional manner, Yap, as well. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, we or, or I am wondering why, why that is, you know, is he thinking, because he felt probably something somewhere, is it his knee, is it his hamstring? You know, he keeps, you know, he goes down and, and, and he stays there, um, becoming very emotional afterwards as well, going off the pitch. Um, yeah, I, I don't understand why, of course, he's showing this emotion. Is it because maybe he feels the injury, the serious, that is very serious and maybe he's missing out on the World Cup? Maybe that's it or maybe other things, I don't know. I, um, players go to him as well, support him, but uh, yeah. Well, I've never been in this situation, but I find it very, very hard to, uh, it, it must to think about why it is, why you're so emotional as a player. He must have done something really bad and he's going to be out for a while. That's the only yeah, thing I yeah, think of. You yeah. don't really see mm -hmm. players, centre-halves especially, get, getting that emotional. And as we said before, he, he's going to be a big mess because he's the yeah. one, one central defender who can defend one-on-one. -on -one. They don't have another one really, so... Replace him, getting back as quick as he possibly can will be, will be a huge benefit. Talking of missing, Eric Ten Hag was still asked about Cristiano Ronaldo after the game. <laughs> Again. Again. Um, what, do you see him back in the squad straight away? 
next weekend? What, what would you like to see happen here? This I, don't know. I, I have the feeling that that that's my feeling that uh, you know with this happening that Eric is thinking as well a little bit further ahead in terms of using other players. Well, he already used other players more than uh, than Ronaldo, of course, but now even more because something like this stays in the back of your head, doesn't it? If, if it happens, and yeah. you know, and, and not like it, it's fair to do so, but it's the whole situation that's been going on between United and Ronaldo, is it the manager and, and Ronaldo, the choices that the manager made, him not playing, he wants to play, we all know that if he stayed at the club in the beginning of the season, that he wants to play, and it's and I, th I think that's normal because that's how he is. You know, he, he's, he's up at top. He's professional. He wants to score goals. He wants to play. Uh, if he's not being used, he doesn't feel part probably of the of the, of the team. Um, is, is not being happy, which is normal as well. Because I think it, at this level, uh, you need to be a player um, that wants to play every game, wants to make every minute. And with this happening, uh, walking off the pitch, uh, not not want to, wanting to come on, yeah, you're creating uh, a little bit more within the club probably as well. And Do you think if he apologises, he'll let him back in? Well, probably he let him back into the squad because uh, maybe he thinking, he's thinking that he, he needs him but um, yeah. and other players want him as well. But is, is that enough? <laughs> After after doing doing so, if a manager tells you what well, you need to come on, or you're a manager yeah. and one of your players is saying yeah, you want to bring him on, and he say no, I'm not going to come on, and he's walking off the pitch, he goes into the dressing room and, and goes goes home. Yeah. That, you're thinking as a manager, yeah. Well, yeah, next time I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna use you and bring you yeah. on in front of other young players, maybe who are like working yeah. working also very hard. And maybe not having this quality of Ronaldo, but I think, but, uh, yeah. I think a lot depends on the if he apologizes first, that will be the first step, and then uh, you know his attitude when he goes back in training. Mm -hmm. If he does goes back in training with the right attitude and uh, and he wants to you know gain his position in the right way, I think uh, everyone would appreciate, and I'm sure he will have a, he will have his chances again. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think his attitude will be a problem. He's, you know, we know what he's like as a professional. I know he released, uh, released a little bit of a statement yesterday. It wasn't an apology, more of a, a statement saying he, he got things wrong. Um, mm -hmm. And I think if he apologised, be back in. I think, I, I feel sorry for the last few United managers, really. They've always had a big player in the background that's always had a bit of an enigma with him. You think of Pogba for so many years, there was always a problem there. He's come in now, he's got the, the problem of Ronaldo always in the background and it's distracting from his team and what 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 he wants to do. The, the mm -hmm. big problem he also has, he's still United's best finisher. So at times, he, he's going to have to play. You think if mm -hmm. he's coming on that game today, last 20 minutes, and they're getting a ball in the box, small pitch at Chelsea, I think could suit him. There wouldn't be as much running to get around the pitch. He will still be hand it for them to get points and there's Europa League as well where he wants to rest players he wants to rest Marcus Rafi he won't want him to play every game and that's ideal for Cristiano I know whether Cristiano settles for that role he's got no choice if he, if he wants to play for United and have a part or a role in United as Yap said at the start of the season this role should have been defined and then it's up to Cristiano whether he stayed or go, well, or went now it's the same situation he will have to accept playing in not in the big games, possibly last 20 minutes in big games, but in probably the, these Europa League games. He's got to accept that. At 37, 38 years of age, a lot of us would accept it. He won't. He believes he should be How difficult is that when you've been such a good player? To, 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 to do what Paul's saying, Gianfranco. I mean, I, I know you were a substitute and well, used a couple of times, a handful of times, shall we say it? But well, it's not easy because obviously when you are a big, uh, such a big player, we, we are, don't forget we are talking about one of the best players ever, one of the best strikers ever. So, and the reason why he's one of the best strikers ever is because also his personality, his, uh, his character, the way he handles things, the way he takes things. He is very competitive. He wants to play all the time. I, I can understand that. If you are not that, you, can, you, don't, you don't play until you are 37, 38. Uh, is the is, is probably is one of the fuels that is got inside, so you have to be respectful of all that. But having said that, he also has to understand that uh, there is a team and the, uh, there is a club, and nobody, nobody, uh, no, uh, nobody can be bigger than the club. So this is something that uh, I'm sure Cristiano will uh, will. Uh, will consider and uh, but it's, it's going to be yeah and, and I still because you keep thinking about it but it, it's, it's it's difficult for him because he is Ronaldo you know he is his personality and he acts how he wants as well because he thinks he he needs to do so as well because it's in, in his right probably as well because in, in, in how he is as a player as well but does he then now need to go into 
the club and, and make apologies and everything. And then, you know, as long as he stays there, he needs to change his personality as well for for everybody. Uh, I'm that, not sure that apology is coming though. I don't. Know if well, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, it's I'm not. But it's always it's always something that that stays there, you know, because yeah. probably a new manager comes in, he doesn't know him as well. He's working with him for only like a couple of months. Yes, um, remember the now, young, the young and, and, players he's got in the yeah, look up to him. There's certain a, lot things, of them, a lot of them young players, he's their hero. Yeah. So to see him then walking off, I think he'll I think he'll come now. I think he might apologise. I won't put money on it, but I've got I a feeling he well. might apologise. I think I well. think he'll realise two or you three know. nights sleep, you think that's wrong, that's that's not the Chris, that's not the way I want to remember at this club and not remembered by all the no, kids no. who are going to watch him, the kids who worship him, who are, who are playing with him. Look, I, I hope he does, and I hope he. No, he has we, a we all do play. because we all we all like him very much as a yeah. player from the yeah. beginning of the season. We all, and we, maybe if we were managers of United, we would have said we play him more often than than what happened now. But the manager, of course, is making certain decisions now, and of course, okay, when 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 did he take him off last week as well? Then the direction of him the, as well, yeah. you know, and that that that, of, doesn't that of course the way doesn't doesn't give people yeah. the expression as well that he's really into it, uh, whatever, or, or he's being appreciated by the manager as well, yeah. you know, so that doesn't work for him as well, so it's, it's, it's a difficult situation, but yeah, hopefully he can be, he still can be very important for the club, for United, 